Hello, everybody. My camera's trying to play some tricks with me today, but we're going to go on and get this done through the blood of Jesus. So I had to a little bit um, go out and come back in, but we're going to get this lesson. I'm going to talk about Josiah and who is Josiah and what jo Josiah um, did for Jerusalem and how faithful he was to the Lord. And you all just stay with me through this. Because sometimes people just talk a good game, but this king started at a very young age and he was overseer of the things that he said he would do. He didn't just talk to talk, but he walked to walk and he wanted to walk like his forefather, King David. He wanted to walk like David walked, to, to, to trust in the Lord and let the Lord guide him and to restore Jerusalem. Okay, you all. Now, let's go into prayer before we start this lesson. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father. Lord Jesus, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I praise you. This video is covered in the blood. We are covered in the blood, oh God, the sinner and receivers. Father God, remove everything from us that can hinder us, oh God, from hearing you, from hearing your word, oh God. Let your anointing and let us sing praises to you, oh God. Let your anointing come through us. And be in your presence. Lord Jesus, I welcome you in this place, holy God. I welcome your holy anointing, your Holy Spirit, the fire and the power of you, O God. Father, I thank you for your son, O God. May you deliver us from all evil, O God. Keep us from temptation, O God. Remove everything from us that's trying to block us from hearing your word, O God. So, Lord, that we may be focused that we may be focused focus on you in this word, Lord, and may you bring people to this channel that, that, that your word may bless them throughout their lives daily, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we reverence you and we honor you. Lord, we welcome you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Forgive us, oh God, for our wrongs, in Jesus' name. May we have repentant hearts. Thank you, Father. Yes, it's always good to reverence God. This video is covered in the blood. It's always good to reverence God, sing praises to his name, sing hallelujah, praises to God. He is worthy to be praised. The devil hates praise, so praise him, praise him, praise him every day, all day long, you all. So I want to talk a little bit about um, Josiah. The word Josiah has been around me a lot lately. I've been saying this, um, this word. And I believe God is trying to speak something to me um, because he wants us to be followers of him. OK. And when we walk upright with him, you know, he rewards us. You know, he gives us our, our just due. And Josiah, um, I'm reading from the Bible, Second Chronicles, um, chapter 34, and also um Second Chronicles chapter 33, um, chat, uh, verse 22, um, on down to, to chapter 34, and on Christianity.com as well as another reference you all. So, just to give you a little bit of preference of what's going on here, Josiah was only eight years old when he became king of Judah. His father had been wicked, who was Ammon, okay? And as had the Jewish kings and culture for generations before him in the eighth year of his reign. And the scripture records that Josiah began to seek the Lord, um, 2 Chronicles 34, 3. And in seeking, he set about restoring the house of the Lord. Okay. Now, he was somebody, he, he started at eight and he... Um, was trying to restore Jerusalem because his father, Ammon, had was serving a false god that um, his father, uh, Ammon, had, had been serving that was put in place from Manasseh, his father, which is uh, uh, Josiah's grandfather. So he wanted to restore things to take the idols down and he didn't just take idols down, tell people to take items down, idols down, but he would oversee. He would oversee the project. So this is what I like about Josiah. He was not about just talking, but he was about his business, about getting it done. Okay. And we need a little bit more of that in this world where uh, people are not just talking to talk, but they're walking to walk and they're 
putting the talk in place. They 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 they, they making an the action out of their words. Okay, so let's read a little bit. Start with Second Chronicles thirty three. Okay, verse twenty two. But he did that was uh, evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father. For Ammon sacrificed unto all the carved images which Manasseh his father had made and served them. So he's talking about Josiah's uh, father and grandfather Manasseh and Ammon. And humbled not himself before the Lord as Manasseh his father had humbled himself. But Ammon trust, uh, trespassed more and more. So it says now, and humbled not himself before the Lord as Manasseh. His father had humbled himself. So Manasseh humbled himself, which is Ammon's father, but Ammon refused to, okay? But Ammon trespassed more and more, all right? And his servants conspired against him and slew him in his own house. But the people of the land slew all of them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah, his son, king in his stead, okay? Now Josiah was eight years old, all right? And say when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years, so which was thirty-one years, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David, King David, his father, which is his forefather, and declined neither to right hand nor to the left. Okay, so he learned to walk with God. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the, uh, the God of David, his father. King David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves. Okay. And the groves and the carved images and the molten images. Okay. So he was being used by God. Josiah was a king, a young king who was being used by God to take down the, the graven images, the molten in, images, the false god. These these uh, people were worth worshiping these false gods, which were abominations to the to God. Okay, so he was God's vessel. Okay, and they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence, and the images that were on high above, he cut down. He cut down those images. And the groves and he, uh, the carved images and the molten image. He's breaking pieces and made dust of them. Okay. And strode it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them. Okay. He tore all that nonsense down. All the uh, graven images. People worshiping these crazy false gods that can't do nothing for them. And he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. So this was like a cleansing when he was doing these things. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon, even unto Naphtali, with their maddox roundabout. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of Israel, he turned to Jerusalem. Okay. Now, in the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, and uh, Messiah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Joash, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. And when they came to Hilkiah, the high priest, they delivered the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites that kept the doors had gathered of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim. And of all the remnant of Israel, and all the Judah and um, Benjamin, and they returned to Jerusalem, and they put in it in the hand of the workmen that had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they gave it to the workmen that brought in the house of the Lord to repair and amend the house to restore it. Okay, even to the artificers and, and builders gave they it to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings and to floor the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed. See, the, the, the king of Judah had put all these graven images up, the false images, false gods that they were trying to worship and destroy the house of God. But Josiah was trying to restore the house of God, so he was trying to reverse what they had done. And the men did the work faithfully, and the overseers of them were J.F. and Obadiah, the Levites of the sons of Moriah. And Zechariah and um, Meshulam are the sons of the Kohathites to set it forward. And other other Levites, all that could skill are the instruments of music. Okay, they were very skillful people. Okay, now the name Josiah 
on Christianity.com, it means healed of the Lord or the Lord will support. Okay. It also means Jehovah uh, heals as well, um, which I, I've, I've researched that. Now, Okay, the workers found the lost and forgotten tour, which it was brought to Jos Josiah's attention, and the words read aloud. He wept tore his clothes and grieved deeply for the ways he his people had turned away from the Lord. See, he was really, really deeply grieved because he see that his people had turned away from the Lord, the way they was walking in these false idols, abominations, and things. He sought the counsel of the Lord through Judah, the prophetess, a rare occurrence of a female prophet. And she encouraged him with the Lord's words of blessings. After that, Josiah led the people in a Passover celebration to rival all Passovers. Okay, so this is very important to pass over you all. And for the rest of Josiah's, Josiah's days, the people of Judah sought the Lord. Okay, Second Chronicles 34, uh, 35. Okay, and let me read that for a second. Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. And he set the priests in their charges and encouraged them to service of the house of the Lord. And he said unto the Levites that taught all Israel, which were holy unto the Lord, put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden to, unto your shoulders. Serve now the Lord your God and his people Israel and prepare yourselves by the houses of your fathers after your courses according to the writing of David, king of Israel and according to the writing of Solomon, his son. So he really liked to follow the things the king David was doing, you all. Okay, now in Christianity.com it says, you're never too young to be used mightily for the Lord. This is very, very true. God chooses whom he chooses to, to, to be a blessing to others. Okay. Now, even though Josiah was only eight years old when God uh, providentially set him on the throne, in the years when Josiah was just stepping into adulthood, God wooed his heart. Josiah had a soft heart that responded wholly to the Lord. If you are young or praying for a young person, don't doubt for a second that God can't use them in the midst of growing years. See, some people would think that um, they overlook a person of a young age. They feel like they they just young, they do what behind the ears. But these are the type of people that God can use, you know. A lot of healing change can happen in a short time. Josiah tore down all the places of false worship that had en ensnared the people of Judah for over 70 years. He, he tore all of that down. Okay, he, this was, was the cleansing. Some of those places and idols had been set up much longer. Sometimes it feels like the strongholds in life or things that need to change have just been there too long to change. Maybe we are so tired of pushing against them, we start to give up hope. Uh, we will ever be free up of them. OK, and this is true. Sometimes when, when things are going on and they could be wrong or they could be against the Lord, sometimes people just allow them to stay there, you know, um, because they don't want to deal with the, the things that they have to do to get rid of them. But the story of Josiah can encourage us that when the Lord's time is just right in a flash, God can set everything right, release what binds us and bring us into a time of restoration. OK, we can't give up hope to pray for things in our life or things um, of those around us. God can use unlikely people to speak into our lives. Josiah was young, yet the Lord used him to to realign the people with their calling and their God at a time when he was probably young enough that most of his subjects could have been his parents or grandparents. God used him to steer their hearts home to him. It wasn't about his age. He still could use them. Now, Holder, it was unusual for a woman to be a prophet, but the Lord used Holder, the prophetess, to bring Josiah's words of promise and encouragement. So he used an adult to bring him encouragement. A woman. 
Nico, finally the Lord used Pharaoh, Nico, to warn King Josiah, yet he didn't listen. And Josiah was ultimately killed in a battle at a young age. Okay, this is in Second Chronicles um, 35, 20 through 27. Now let's read this for a second. After all this, when Josiah had prepared a temple, Nico, king of Egypt, came up to fight against um, Carchemish by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against them. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to, to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God, who was with me, that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him and hearken not into the words of Nico from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Okay. And the archers shot at King Josiah and the king said to his servants, have me away for I am sore wounded. Okay. He said. Uh, his servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah. And all the sing, uh, singing men and the singing women spake Josiah to their lamentations to this day. And made them an ordinance in Israel and behold they are written in the lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, according to that which was written in the law of the Lord and his deeds, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Then the people of the land took Joash, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. So after um, Josiah died, the people took Joash, the son of Josiah, and made him king. Okay, in uh, Jerusalem. Okay, everybody. Okay, I want to get to something else. Why is this over here? Just a second, you all. I need to pause for a second. I got to get rid of something. That's popping up here, you all. Okay, thank you all for waiting. God can and does speak through unlikely sources because he cares so much for us that he uses anything and everything to reach out unto us. See, God will use anybody he wants. They could be young, they can be old, to get his point across, to get his will, that his will be done in our lives. It is wise to make sure that what someone speaks into our life matches up with scripture, okay? But we also don't want to miss something just because it comes from an unusual place like Josiah. We want to have tender hearts. See, don't, don't overlook that young person because God can use the young or the old, you know, to do his will. At an early age, Josiah became king to do the will of the father. So let me um, finish reading chapter 34, you all. Okay, now chapter 34. Verse 14, and when they brought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. Okay, and Hilkiah answered and said to Shephon the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered a book to Shaphan. Shaphan carried the book to the kings and brought the king's work back again, saying, All that was committed to thy servants, they do it. And they had, had gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord. I think I've read this already. Okay, so let's go to okay, let me say 34 verse 23 and he, she answered them, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. 
Okay, this is Hilkiah the prophetess. Let's go up to 22. And Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Hildur the prophetess, the wife of Shalem, the son of Tikva, the son of Hazrash, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, and they spake to her to that effect. And she answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the man that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book, which they have read before the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire the Lord, so shall ye say unto the, um, him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humblest thyself before me, and didst rend thy clothes, they tore the clothes, and weep before me. I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. Before I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I bring will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again, you know, calamity. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up to the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people, great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in his book. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. They took their stand, you all. And Josiah very important here. Verse 33, chapter 34. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertain to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve even to serve the Lord their God. And all this day, all his days, they departed not from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem and they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the month. OK, so he had that Passover um, trying to honor the Lord. OK. And he set the priests in their charges, and encouraged them to the service of the house of the Lord and said unto the Levites that taught all Israel, which were holy unto the Lord, put the holy ark in the house, which Solomon, the son of David, King David, Israel built. There should not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now the Lord your God and his people Israel. So he was telling them to serve Israel, to serve God. You know, he used to say, come out of that um, the negative ways that they were um, following to serve the Lord God. See, Josiah was all about doing the work of God. He was not trying to be disobedient to the Lord. He wanted to do um, be in God's. Um, he wanted to do walk in the way of the Lord of God. OK, he told them to prepare themselves. By the houses of your fathers after your courses, according to the writing of King David of Israel and according to the writing of Solomon, his son. So he was telling them to follow the God like King David followed him and stand in the holy place according to the divisions of families of the fathers of the brethren, the, the brethren, the people. And after the divisions of the families of the Levites, so kill the Passover and sanctify yourselves and prepare your brethren that they may do according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. So back then, this was Josiah was trying to tell him to follow, to follow the things of Moses that God was telling Moses to do. And Josiah gave to the people of the flock, lambs and kids, all of the Passover offerings for all that were present to the number of 30,000 and 3,000 bullocks. These were of the king's substance, their possessions. OK, it's a lot. And his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests and to the Levites. Hilkiah and Zechariah and Angelahai, rulers of the house of God, gave unto the priests for the Passover offerings 2,600 small cattle and 300 oxen. 
Conaniah also, and Shemaiah, and Nathaniel, his brother, and Hashabiah, and uh, Jeliel, and Josabad, chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for Passover offerings 5,000 small cattle and 500 oxen. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses, according to the king's commandment. <clears throat> Excuse me, and they killed the Passover, and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands, and the Levites flayed them. <coughs> Excuse me, and they removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the peoples, to offer unto the Lord as it is written in the book of Moses, and so did they with the oxen. And they roasted um, the Passover with fire according to the ordinance of the other holy offerings, saw it. They in pots and cauldrons and in pans and divided them speedily among the, the people. And afterward, they made ready for themselves and for the priests. Because the priests, the sons of Aaron, Aaron were busy in offer, uh, burnt offerings and the fat until night. Therefore, the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their place according to the commandment of David. And Asaph and Heman and uh, Jaduthon the king, seer, and the porters waited at every gate. They might not depart from their service for their brethren, the Levites, prepared for them. See, this 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 story was was really something because here you have where a king was put in place that was eight years of age that began to follow the follow God, when you had adult people that were doing all these abominations and God used a, 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 a king of a young age such as eight to try to wipe these things out, to tear these idols down, these false idols. See, this is how much God hates idol worship, idolatry. This is how much God hated because it's abomination. We are not to make any graven image um, of idols and worshiping these things, okay? And we have people that that's, that's pray to idols and things like that, and that's false worship. We are only supposed to worship God, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. We're not supposed to worship a rock. We're not supposed to worship any um, kind of animal. We're not supposed to worship anything that's carved in the image. Um, it's false worshiping, it's falsehood, it's abominable to the Lord. And when you had people, adults in abominations following these things, type of practices, Jesus sent Josiah to destroy these things and he would send to, you know, him to oversee it. He wasn't just saying, go and take care of this and take this down. He actually saw it be done so God will use who he will use and he will get it done in his will with his plan with the commitment his heart was for God Josiah's heart was for God okay and it hurt him to see that his people had destroyed Jerusalem had destroyed the land with all these false worshiping. It hurt him because they were not um, listening to the Lord. They was not listening to God. You know, when God say, don't make, make these idols. You know, it's, it's like what happened with Moses when he was going to get the uh, Hebrews, the Israelite Hebrews from Egypt and when they got impatient, they wanted to still be back in their Egypt ways. And they wanted to have the meat that Pharaoh had fed them. And they wanted to have the um, golden images. They, they created a golden calf. And Moses was so um, fed up with them. No matter what God was trying to do for them, they still wanted to be back in the old ways. They thought the old ways of, of being enslaved in Egypt was better. Okay, so this is a strong, strong story. If you really look at it, you know, take time out to read 
who just Josiah is 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 in um first Kings and second Chronicles um the story of Josiah and his reign and how God used him because um he will take that 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 small person in your life take a situation in your life he will use that person a small person the young person or, or whomever that you never would have thought for his glory okay see this is this is when people um come to the channel and they 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 give me messages about how can god use this person and how could god use that person because he's God, because he can use anyone he choose. Okay. He is God. Okay. And no other can do what he do. So if he want to take the little eight year old to make a point, he will, he'll do it. And this is so very, very important. Just like the, 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 the scripture says, and a child shall, shall lead. You know, it, it took an eight-year-old to want to follow God when you had adult grown people that should have known better. They were worshiping all kind of other things. And as today, we have this as today. Okay. So when I was spoken to about the abominations being being um that God was going to come after the abominations. I believed him. Okay. Now we have some that they don't believe that God can speak to a certain person. And they don't believe that God can speak to you um, in certain ways. And how can you hear God this way? Did God really say that? How do you know this is God? You know, and... God has, the Holy Spirit has spoken to my heart in different ways. It's a lot of things that God let me see. You know, when he used you as his disciples, he'll show you things that he wants you to see. Sometimes it's to warn people. Sometimes it's to, 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 to prep people, to prompt people, you know, and he, he'll he give you confirmation on things. There's things that have been given to me, um, that, that was spoken to me before that, that God has given me confirmation on and because he loves us. Okay. And, and God is, is not a God that's, is, is, is not the Messiah that's going to just sit there and let you leave you hanging. Okay. He will provide the safety net for you. He will send a uh, disciple out there to warn you or to teach you, you know, and he correct us as well. He correct his disciples as well. You know, we are not without reproach or correction or reproof. You know, he corrects us when we are wrong because we're not perfect. We're, 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 we're in, um, uh, he's wor working with us, you know, um, God's disciples, he's always working with us. Okay. So we get, we have to be corrected with the rod of correction. Okay. And when we are teaching others, he has to make sure that we are doing what we supposed to do in his will. And if we are not, he'll correct us. Okay. Now, none of us is um, good in the sight of God because there's only one good and that's him. Okay, so we are flawed people and he knows that. But he gives us his word to teach us so that we can walk in his way and walk in his light, walk in his will. See, if you want to know how to walk in his will, it's about reading his word, meditating on his word, and praying to him continually each and every day. That's how we know how to walk in his will. Okay. And always 
confess your wrongs and repent. Always confess. If you know that you did something wrong, it could be something as small as fussing at somebody from a traffic stop. You know, you could say, Lord, please forgive me for my wrongs. Help me to be better. You know, and if you know you do something that's that's not good in the sight of God, it could be any anything, big thing, small thing. Always ask the Lord to forgive you. OK, don't never go a day without doing something that's 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 without the side of God and not confess and ask for forgiveness, because that's that's what God requires from us to know, you know, to not reverence in our wrongdoings and not to boast about being wrong and not to be prideful. But he want us to be humble because he say the meek shall inherit the earth. Okay, so God used this young boy, Josiah, to restore Jerusalem, to take down the false idols, to oversee that they were removed and taken down. It was not just about talk, but it was about doing. See, God wants us to not just be talkers, but be doers. If we talk in the word, we're supposed to be doing as well, everyone. So God is an awesome God. And don't ever think that God can't use a small child because when his anointing is on someone, he can use anyone he choose. And that's the lesson that I want for you all to understand he can use who he want to use he can save who he want to save he can bless who he want to bless no respect of persons just because you might see that this person can't be used god can see different so with god all things are possible even the small child took that small child to restore jerusalem from false idolatry and idol worshiping you all. He always send that branch for warnings and to restore. It's about restoring, restoration, renewal, you know. So you all, may God be uh, bless you all. I pray that restoration, restoration um, is applied in your lives. In, in your lives each and every day. I pray that God restores your minds and healing for your spirit and your souls, you all. And I pray that you are walking in reverence of God, the Father and the God, the Son, the triune God, the Trinity. Okay? One faith, one God, and one baptism. Okay? Not um, following false worshiping um, idolatry and idolizing things, but to worship the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, you all. He is our Messiah. He is our true King. He is our Savior, and He reigns forevermore. He is sovereign God. He is sovereign. He is sovereign. And, and, I just want to pray for you all before I go. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, that people may hear your word and listen, Lord, that people may walk and be Christ-like, O oh God, that people may confess and repent each and every day, O oh God. Father God, that people just be one in oneness with you, that people want to walk godly, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, O oh God, that people just be renewed and restored in their families, in their minds, in their positions, their walk of life, the way they're doing things, oh God, and that they're seeking you with their whole hearts and their minds. Lord Jesus, it's not by power, not by might, but by it's your spirit, oh God. Lord Jesus, give us that strength. You are the light and let us be salt of the earth, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray there's victory, there's victory, there's victory, oh God, in your name, Jesus. 
No other name is above the name of Jesus, you all. Be blessed. Go in peace. Don't be ashamed, afraid to share the videos. And um, may you leave a comment or a like in Jesus' mighty name. I love you all and God love you. Be blessed, you all. Bye-bye.